Hi everyone, my name is Toya C. Bamdili. This is a course I created called Basic Oil Flow Math and it's just mathematical principles I've learned in the oil field and through the oil field math course I've taken just some hands-on tips, um, like a refresher more of your general math and it kind of builds up on that in the oil and gas or oil field context. So I hope this is helpful to someone or I just want to have a glimpse, the person just wants to have a glimpse of um, what the oil food math course might be like. This might help. So I hope um, you gain as much as you can. So let's get right into it. The topics I will be discussing will be area, volume, capacity. There will be some additional information and the glossary for some un unfamiliar terms will be, it. will be with the last video on capacity. So the glossary will be with the last video. So let's 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 go straight to area. Under area, we're gonna discuss surface area, area of a circle, cross-sectional area, and annular area. So surface area is just defined as the number of unit squares within a defined surface boundary. So basically, how many squares do I have within this boundary? That's just basically what it is, and it's expressed in inch squared. Um, square inches or square feet, right? We're, we're familiar with this, with these terms. As long as we're taking our general math, it's something we're familiar with, and it's 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 necessary to have a basic understanding of all these areas of different shapes because it, we build up on it um, for other calculations. You know, you have to build up on your foundation. Once once your foundation is strong enough, you move on forward. Uh, you move forward towards um, harder problems. But it's just a basic refresher. It's nothing too difficult as long as you're taking your all for math. So your basic uh, formula for your area of a rectangle slash square is length times width, where length is um, L and W is width. So this is just a problem. What is the area of the rectangle that measures 6 inches long by 5 inches wide? So we have that 6 inches long. 5 inches wide and we all know 6 times 5 will give me 30 so I have 30 square inches. Next up is area of a circle, another familiar um, uh, map principle. You know this is a basic topic we all learned in probably high school or secondary school so it's something very familiar for those that you know math. Uh, and like I said it's just about building up on on what you've learned in the past, um, making your foundation stronger, because we have so many circular shapes, um, including your tubing, your casing, your packers, so many field equipment, so many accessories, and uh, basically you have to calculate volumes. And area will be the basis for ca calculating your volume. So we're all familiar with this um, formula, pi r squared, where pi is 3.1416, and it could be longer. Um, I'm just going to stop with 3.1416. And this is just a very hands-on formula. You know, we deal with diameters a lot. Um, our tubing sizes in inches, we deal, we, deal, we deal with diameters a lot. So just quicker, rather than having to go through this, then break it down. It's just better to know that, okay, my area is 0 0.7854 times diameter squared. Quick and simple. So what is the area of a circle which has a diameter of 4 inches? So you have your circle, four inches, for its diameter. Your diameter could be anything, you know, your longest length on your circle. So the solution is basically 0 0.7854 times diameter squared, which would give me my 12.5664 square inches. You know, simple, easy peasy. We can move on to the next topic. Next, we have cross-sectional area. So cross-sectional area is a 2D view when an object is cut through on a parallel plane or when it's cut through in half, that's that's just your cross-sectional area. When the surface of my object when I cut it in half, as long as both sides are equal, both surfaces are equal. Um, then we'll mainly be discussing the solid rod and the hollow tube. And mainly we'll be building up on the hollow tube because that's what um, we would further break down. In future videos um so next you know we know this is the same formula with surface area 
So area is 0 0.7854 times diameter squared. And that just that's just what I want you to understand. Basically, this surface right here, if I cut this place in half, I should have the same exact surface. So I just took the solution from the previous slide and placed it here, and it should give me the exact same answer as the surface area of my cylinder. So what is the cross-sectional area of a hollow tube with an OD of 5.25 inches and ID of 4.20 inches? So basically here, I said that the cross-sectional area of a hollow tube is um, OD area minus ID area, which is the outer diameter, the area of the outer diameter minus the area of the inner diameter. And when I come here, my solution, I break that, I break that down. I plug in my 5.25, I plug in my 4.20, and uh, square both, and I get my answer. Right? So it's simple, it's easy. Um, yeah, you have your OD, 5.25, your ID, 4.20. I mean, it's simple. It's not, 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 not so hard or so difficult to understand. So let's move on to the next thing. My annular area. So annular area is the area between a casing ID and a tubing OD. So, so I'm saying single string. So this this is my image for a single string right here. I have my casing, right? And I have my tubing. So area of casing ID and tubing OD right here. So annular area is 0 0.7854. Casing ID squared minus tubing OD squared. So, you know, single string, I have maybe my casing, maybe my surface casing, maybe I have my intermediate casing, and maybe I have my production casing way down. So, um, that's just basically an understanding of what the string might be, or maybe there's another, another equipment in the hole, or, you know, another assembly of some sort. So when I break that down, I get this, 0 0.7854 casing ID squared minus tubing OD squared. One thing to really, really take into consideration is the ID. I'm given um, a casing of 958, but when it comes down to me calculating my annular area, I want the ID. Because this is, this, is, this is the area I'm looking for right in here, right? So I don't need this. I will need my... ID. So that's one of the most important things I wanted to point out. And I need my OD of this, not this one. Because I'm trying to calc um, find the area, this area right here. So, um, subtracting that, I get my answer. You know, it's not a big deal. Like I said, simple math, just putting in oilful, oilful terms now with casing and tubing. Um, so that's the most important thing I wanted to point out here was, you know, take into, you have to take into consideration the inner diameter and not the outer diameter. So let's move on to um, two or more strings. And this is just two or more strings. I have two or more strings in my hole. I have my casing, my tubing, or any sort of assembly that I might have in my hole. So the question is, what is the annular area given the following conditions? I have nine five nine five eight inches. So this represents inches, 47 pound per foot. So that's my weight of my casing. So three and a half inches, 9.2 pound per foot tubing, and 278 inches, 6.5 pound per foot tubing. And the question is, what is the annular area? So um, we just take the formula, right? So zero point seven eight five four casing ID squared. You know we've discussed that in the, in the in the previous slide. That it's very important to take that into consideration. Casing ID squared minus tubing number one OD OD squared plus tubing number two OD squared. I remember annular area is this space right here. I'm trying to calculate how much space do we have between this casing ID and this tubing. OD and this tubing OD. So I have my answer 0 0.7854, 8.661 squared minus 3.52 plus 2.875 squared. And I get my answer, which is 43.0764. And one thing um, 
you have to consider here about the the weight uh, in, res in, in respect to the size of your tubing or your casing is the heavier my tubing or my casing the smaller my ID right so the smaller my ID is going to be for my casing right and what does that do for my annular for my annular area so if I have a heavier weight casing or heavier weight tubing or let's say heavier weight casing in this in this in this example right I'm gonna have a smaller area smaller annular area because this is this is not, not gonna be this is not gonna be 8.661 this is gonna be less than 8.661 so I hope that makes sense because um, also you have to note the pattern that the heavier my weight is the smaller my annular area is going to be because I'm going to have a smaller casing ID. So it's important to put all those in consideration apart from calculations and learning formulas. It's important to notice, notice patterns and keep all that in mind. So I hope this is my first video. I just wanted to make it really short, each video really short, focus on area, then move on um, to the next topic. So if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, please put it in the comment section below. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks.